Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Consulting with Authority. This is your host, Scott Cantrell. Excited to be joined by a colleague of mine, a new friend of mine. Um, I love doing this podcast because I get to meet so many uh, people that I get to call new friends. And today's a very special episode. We're going to be welcoming uh, Dr. Greg Allen to the show. Um, Dr. Allen has over 20 years of teaching uh, adult learners as a corporate trainer and a university professor. He specializes in coaching and mentoring leaders in every phase of their management journey. Um, He's an Everything DISC certified training partner, a John R. Wooden certified executive coach, and a Six Sigma black belt. So certainly got some street cred attached to his name. Uh, Most importantly, he brings 20 plus years of actual practical entrepreneurship and senior management experience to his firm, Step Up Consultants. Uh, Dr. Allen, Greg, thank you so much for joining us and being willing to share some of your expertise today. You know, I'm so happy to be here, Scott. Thank you. You can, you, you can drop the doctor. Just Greg's grid, man. Greg, Greg, Greg it is. I appreciate that. Um, so r- related, though, to all of these uh, credentials that I sort of just listed off here, you've done a, an incredible amount of work, um, had a lot of experience in this arena that you work in. Maybe mm-hmm. take everybody through the trajectory of your career and the journey that brought you to creating Step Up Consultants, your, your firm. I tell you what, it, it's an unexpected journey, Scott. Let me tell you. I mean, when I walked off my graduation stage at undergraduate in, in 88, so that dates me a little bit, <laughs> I thought to myself, man, I'm done. I'm, I'm through a school. So yeah. and then I went, I went and worked uh, at a at a small junior high. And I tell you what, three years of that, I was like, you know, adults are good. So um, <laughs> um so I you know, I knew that. I was gift. I, I, I love teaching. I love giving to others and that knowledge. So I knew I wanted to stay on that journey, but I didn't know what to, you know, I was kind of at a crossroads there in my, in my mid twenties. And you know how you are with your twenties. You just don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, and I, I got picked up by a, a broadband service provider as their trainer. And that was great until that bubble burst. And, and then it wasn't so great. Mm-hmm. Um, but the wonderful thing was, is they, they sent me back and, and, um, they sent me back to school and I got my MAT at that point when I was right. doing that. So that was yep. beautiful. Um, and again, that was one of those things where they're like, well, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I want to go back to school. And they're like, yeah, we'll pay for that. So that was super. Um, and then, uh, after the bubble burst and, and, and again, I was at a crossroads. I, I, uh, was lucky enough to be hired by, um, George Fox university, um, and that was back in, in the early 2000s. I spent 20 years there as a professor of management and organizational leadership. And um, you know how higher ed, institutes of higher education, they're like, you know, if you're going to teach management, you should probably get an MBA. And then I got that. And then I said, you know, if you want to stay here, you should probably get a PhD. And that five years later, I slogged through the PhD. Wow, and, um, you know, that was that was a great process. But boy, so, so. You just got the grit to, to get yeah. that. But you know the the wonderful thing about the universe I was I was the, you know working with for twenty years is I had the opportunity to really pour into people, mm-hmm. and and I really found that that's my mission is to help others in any way I can. So I I have a couple things that I'm really good at, and and, and one of those is just giving giving to others. And whether that's knowledge or time or donations or whatever it is, it's about it's not about me. It's about getting out of my way and and pouring into those to those other people. So that's been my mission for the last 20 years. And now um, I've left the university and started my own consulting company mm-hmm. and um, am doing professional development. How weird is that? Right. <laughs> um, and it's just it's just a joy. It's a new challenge. And mm-hmm. I love challenges and and I love the the um, boy, doing new things and, yeah. and, and, you know, not being afraid and just stepping into it and saying, yeah, I can do that. I don't know how, but I can do it. So, <laughs> so that, that's the thing. And so now I'm, I'm just step up consultants and we're offering leadership and management training. And just like it's very similar to the classes that I um, loved um, teaching at the university. So, yeah. um, you know, the 12 week cohort classes where everybody journeys together for the 12 weeks and, and we have, um, it's a hybrid delivery. So they, they work online and then we meet once a week, whether that's face to face or now via zoom because of this COVID thing, but, Mm -hmm. um, it really does develop that community and the adult learning style, which is very, very much experiential learning. So that's, yeah, that's, that's been a blessing. 
Excellent. So, uh, and you started talking about this, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper. The nature of the work that you're doing is primarily these uh, these 12 week training programs for leadership and and management focused uh, programs. Maybe break those down for us a little bit in terms of the different programs that you offer, and and more specifically, who is it that you primarily provide these to? I like to give everybody out there sort of an understanding of. Um, uh, you know, the architecture of your, of your practice and your firm, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, you know, this, uh, I've been doing this for the last four years, some of that with the university, some of that by myself and, and mm-hmm. um, was lucky enough to have some really good people in my classroom previously that said, Hey, Greg, we need, we need you to come over and, um, and teach leadership and management to my law firm. And that's how I kind of got into law firms. But um, I offer four courses, and one of them is frontline leadership, and that's for people that are, you know, maybe they're professionals in there in you know what they're doing, like law, like lawyers. They go through law school; they're really good at the law. They understand that, but but leading teams might be a mystery. Yep. Um, and so it's it's the frontline leadership where we we develop that mindset, we understand about teams, and we you know it's it's pouring into others again and, and under, unleashing the talent of the team and trusting mm. them. Um, mm-hmm. So that's the frontline leadership. Um, and then we have developing high impact teams where we really take a deeper dive into, um, into focusing on developing, uh, understanding the team's goals and developing the people uh, and their skill set, and, and really pouring into how we can make them better, not only at their job, but, achieving their goals and whether those goals are to stay with the company for 20 years or whether those goals are to start their own business in five years, it's fine. Right. You just have to, you, 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 the more you give, the more you get from your team. And so that's what that's about. Gotcha. Yep. And then we have uh, agile operations and that's um, where we talk about project management and process improvement and um, more heavily management focused, uh, operational focused. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then we have the executive track, which is about strategy and thinking um, long term about the a business and the people that we want there and what kind of culture we're, we're trying to establish. Um, so those are the four. And like I said, they're 12 week courses. They're mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Uh, I try to make them, like I said, it's adult learning. So it's not me, you know, lecturing and boring everybody to death. It's about team, the team process and sharing your experiences and learning from others. Mm-hmm. Um, and then applying those those uh, theories and and the, the cooperative learning model is all about taking taking that information and, and making it real for the next day. So yeah. Take work. So it's very practical, um, and and it's I tell you what it's a heck of a lot of fun to teach and and I you know my goal is has always been let's have the last class where in the whole school. So you know because if you if you if you get people working they get loud and they they they're understanding each other and they're producing quality. So yeah. so uh, I'm not I'm not about I'm not I'm not against fun in the class. Yeah, no that's good. I think I I think it's really important. Uh and I, and I think this model is really interesting too. Um obviously it makes sense in a way because of your background that you would gravitate and and you know really run and enhance and maximize for your own firm this model that you perfected over so many years of teaching right and and so it absolutely makes perfect sense i would suspect you know other consultants and coaches out there might not be as accomplished as you might be in the lecture format or in a teaching mode but um i think the model is really interesting these 12 week programs whatever the content may be um are are your when you create a cohort of, of students who are going through one of these courses, do you, you guys meet weekly uh, every week for 12 weeks? Is that right? Yeah. So, so there's, there is uh, we, we do have one face-to-face meeting, whether that's mm-hmm. an hour, two hours, face-to-face or virtual, doesn't really matter. Uh, Cause that's the time when, because prior to that, they have online content. There's yeah. some yeah. discussions. There's a couple little reading things and, that's where they really understand the concept that we're, we're going for that week uh, mm-hmm. where they can discuss it in a, in a, um, in an asynchronous way in discussion forums and talk about their experiences with that, whether right, that's right. good experiences or bad, bad experiences are almost better because then you learn where not to step. Right. But, right, right. You know, either way, that's that, that cold model, which is the concrete experience. And then they have the reflective observation on what went right, what went wrong, why. And, and in the classroom, they get to, they get to experience uh, and develop, there's, here's how I'm going to do it next time. And I actually get to do that next time. And the, the one wonderful thing about that is I'm never going to fire. 
right? So, so they experiment right. in my classroom. They figure out, oh, this works or this doesn't work, and here's why. And and so it's 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 very much a laboratory experience. And then they they take that experience and they get to apply it the next day. Yeah, in their office. That's great. That's great. Um, and so uh, the meet on so they so each week there is a. Um, their subject matter, right? There's the yeah. the content that they are internalizing, go through on their own. And then the classroom is a place where they can all collaborate, share what they liked, what they didn't like, uh, kind of, you know, mastermind, project. brainstorm, talk about practical applications. No, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's um, a lot of fun. In, in terms of, and so all that to say, I think that model could could really be beneficial to a lot of folks who are watching and listening to this. What would you tell a uh, a coach or a consultant who has a high level of expertise, regardless of who their market is or what their topic is, what would you say are maybe uh, potential mistakes or pitfalls or things that they need to be sure to do or not do if they want to adapt uh, or adopt a, a course, a, a delimited course program model where it's not them going into an organization necessarily and doing a consulting project, but it really is providing this content uh, over the course of a 90 day period of time, recommendations on how they should, you know, start to create such a model or things they should look at avoiding if they want to uh, apply a, a model like that. Yeah. No, this, this is, you have to know the content as a, as a, as a teacher, you have to really know the understand right. the concept and then you have to figure out, okay, you have to go look and say, what case studies work for this? Mm. How do we, how do we make sure that, cause, cause the, the, Core, core piece of this is that students are doing the work before they meet you and before right. they're in the classroom. And now it's about um, that application of those things. So you have to know that content and have an idea about how you're going to get them active in that. Um, so you really have to, um, I mean, the most I lecture, and I, I hate to call it lecture, it's just talking, but it's, yeah, about 10 yeah. it's about 10 minutes where it's just recapping, recapping the form, recapping the, the salient points of what I want them to learn that week. And right. then I have three or four activities where they're actually doing it. Understood. So, yep. so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, from a um, delivery standpoint, there's a lot of work about understanding the, the concepts and then how are you going to get your um, class to, or audience to apply those concepts? Yeah. So, the, so many times classrooms, not about application. No, and, you're hundred percent right. It's not, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what, that's what I really um, have tried to do because adults learn by doing right. We don't learn by listening. I mean, we we, we catch five percent of what we what we hear. Right. But if you can actually hear it, read it, and then you do it, well, you're more likely to to, to carry that through the next day. Yeah. And you're more likely to take. You know, my goal goal is to say, okay, I want you to find one thing today, one thing that you can take with you, and, and, and put that in your tool belt and use it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's good. So yeah, no, that's great. I just want to recap those notes because I think it is important. Obviously, if you're going to do a course, you do have to be full, very, very fluent in the material. Um, but the key thing I think that you pointed out, which I think is really important, is we've all been through online courses or even in-person courses where we haven't gotten anything meaningful out of it, right? We're just trying to check a box. Um, and, you know, some of them may, maybe there's a gold nugget here or there, but it's not really impactful. What you're talking about is, is how to turn that, that knob up to maximum impact. And your focus to that point is obviously you got to have the content and the knowledge, but you're going to do that leading up to our classroom session. In our classroom session, it's all about, yes, there's a recap, but it's all about interactive application, practical application. And now that's what you're taking away. So that's the, that's the note that I'm hearing. If I ever wanted to create a, a program like this, I need to make sure that those sessions are filled with actual case studies, direct application, so that people are truly, it's its not theoretical anymore, right? It, it, it gets where the rubber meets the road in terms of what action needs to be taken to, to solve the problem or use the strategy or whatever it may be. Yeah, and that's the power of teams as well, because because so right. many adults have, have had the experience, and whether it's good or bad, you need to share that. And, and I always say, look, I didn't write this book. So you can disagree if you want to, and, yeah. but, but we need to take, we need to understand what that was and where it went wrong and then have good ideas on how to make that better because there's always pieces that went, went okay and went horribly. And so you look at that and go, okay, how do I, how do I leave the junk and take the good stuff? Yep. Yep. That makes perfect sense. How, how many, uh, and it may vary, but how many students do you typically have in a course session? That's a great question. Yeah. We, I cap it at 16. Okay. Um, because that, that gives me groups of four. Yeah. And because I am so application based that, that that I like to have 
the, the larger discussion with the 16 of us, but then I break it down into groups of four. And then when then they really get into the cases or they get into practical application and can can exchange that knowledge and the power of teams. Yeah. That's so good. there's leader, there's leadership threaded. Doesn't matter which class you take, there's always leadership threaded through that. So mm-hmm. you can apply leadership to the, the the concepts of the week. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I know those are the types of logistics questions. If someone's thinking about this model or or applying it, it's not working for them or they want to make it better. This is this is great information and insight. So in terms of uh, your marketplace, um, I, I'm making an assumption that you're largely industry agnostic. Obviously, you have a strong market from what you said in the uh, legal field. Who, what types of organizations do you typically work with? Um, I, I, I am specifically looking at medical and, and legal and um, but like you say, it's agnostic. So, and I'm just starting out this, the consulting business. My company is six years old and really I haven't unleashed it until, until this year. Mm-hmm. So um, an organization that wants to learn and grow and, and manage and lead their, their teams better. That's, that's it. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily, you know, have a specific niche. Mm-hmm. I, I like to, you know, my, my thing is like, if I can, if you think I can help you, let's do that. Mm-hmm. So, so um, you know, I'm looking for for any any uh, training training out there that that per, you know a company that wants training to you know hey let's have a conversation love yeah to, love to, lo- love to have the conversation you know I'm looking at at getting MCLE credits for these classes as well mm-hmm. as university credits so I'm going through yeah. the accreditation process and right. that's a that's a big win um, and uh, again we're we're not there yet but we are. Um, down the road with those processes. So that's exciting um, to, to be able to offer that um, benefit to people that attend. Yeah, that makes sense. And it certainly does make sense too. You talk about medical and legal in particular, um, you know, those specialized or, or technical fields, um, mm-hmm. you know, it does make sense that this type of training, these four courses that you've outlined would be especially valuable for those types of organizations um, where, you know, the nature of the individual is so service driven and expertise driven that oftentimes these management or leadership issues are um, not rightfully, but they're they're pushed to the side. Right. They're not the main focal point. And, and it becomes very clear that there is a liability or weakness or a gap in, in the opportunity for the organization without having that training available. Yeah, and everybody can get better. And sometimes you you have sure. a training either you don't have a training department, or your training department doesn't specialize in management and leadership. And and that's that's where um, I've yeah. fit in for the last twenty five years and and uh, enjoy the light bulb coming on and, and 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 the students applying that what we just did the next day. And those stories yeah. are just wonderful. Sure, sure. So uh, to that end, I know the business is relatively young and your focus on it is relatively new. But what what have been your, you know, strategies for identifying or accessing new opportunities or what are you looking to do? What are you trying to do now in terms of getting these opportunities out there in front of new uh, prospects that can become clients? Right. And, and I, I just got done with a BNI meeting and, and networking with um, yep. within, you know, getting into a networking group is very important. Um, and, I, you know, funny enough is, you know, I, I joined that group because they, they give infomercials every week. So they talk about their business. And yeah. as a professor, you don't have to talk about it. You just I mean, people come and you teach and it's all good. Right. But as right, a, right, right. a businessman, you have to talk effectively about your business. And so I needed practice in that. I needed to get better in that. So I joined that. Um, another thing I've been just so blessed with is I've got, I have wonderful um, former students that I keep in contact with. And that's, that's provided a, a super warm market for, for me. And, you know, the, the, the thing about giving to people and, and, and is, is that the more you give, the more they want to help you. Yeah, and you know, I have a wonderful network of executives and former students that that think I'm all right and want to, want to see me succeed. And and I I just you know there's nothing better than going out to coffee with with an old friend that was in your class that that you just talk with and, and see where they are in the journey. And they're like, hey, how do we help you with this? So yeah. so those are very organic things. But um, you know, the more, like I said, the more you give, the more you get. And but you never know. 
you know, it, it, you never know at what point you're going to come alongside each other, but it's always just nice to have that, um, have those um, friends and resources. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that's great. You know, uh, and this idea that you said at the very beginning of our conversation, your focus on truly contributing as much as you can to the people that are around you in whatever way you can. Right. Um, and it's, you know, it's this, you know, axiom of our world and, and of our universe. And that is we reap what we sow. Um, and so the more positive seeds that you can put into the ground and cultivate over time, that is simply going to produce the harvest, you know, in, in the future. And that, that sounds like that's just sort of your, uh, you know, it's just sort of who you are. It's just your philosophy. And obviously being a, being a teacher, <laughs> I think that, I think for, for most teachers that's in their DNA uh, sure. to do that. And so I think it's a very natural way, but then there's this practical application of business development where in a very real way, you're, you're, you are catalyzing and stimulating reciprocity. You're not giving so that you will get, that's not the purpose, but a natural result of giving and contributing value is that you will get those returns in the future. Right. Right. Yeah. It's about pouring into others. And, and, and like I said, you just keep up those relationships and, and it becomes, how do we help each other? Yeah. Well, and, 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 and that's a really important note too, is you talked about keeping up with those relationships and, you know, everybody talks about how our, our world of coaching and consulting is very relationship driven. In fact, I was just at an event yesterday uh, learning from Alan Weiss, who is a, a very well-known consultant's consultant. And he, one of the notes that he made frequently is that relationships are key to a consultant's being able to continue to grow and, and, and achieve the next level of breakthrough. And, and I think that would be true for just about every consultant or expert, you know, person with expertise who has knowledge, skill, expertise they're trying to share with the world is there is no substitute for a really valuable, um, re, you know, network relationship, relationship with a network of people. And, and those people don't always have to be future clients. They could be colleagues or strategic partners or your BNI colleagues and so forth. And so I think it really is just a matter of putting yourself out there and being visible amongst the right groups of people and, and, and not just doing it once, but cultivating those opportunities. Right. I mean, you know, that's my, that's been my favorite part of my job for the last 20 years is just going and connecting with, with my, my, my people, as I call them. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, one, one of the things I say in class is my name is Greg and I'm here to help. And they always remember it's corny. It's so true though. Right. And it's one of those things where, you know, 20, I just had, I just had coffee with, with, with um, a gentleman that, that uh, he's an executive down in California and we just had coffee and he's like, do you still say that corny saying? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you know, it's true. He's like, I say that to my crew all the time now. He's like, I blame you. I'm like, I'm good with that. I'm good with <laughs> yeah, that. You'll, you'll own that one. I love I'm, it. I'm okay no. with, yeah. I, I, I do. I think that philosophy is, is it really, really important. And especially in the world that we're in, where our job in, in, you know, to, to, to steal another phrase from, from Alan Weiss and share it here, the consultant's job is to improve the condition of our client. And that's exactly what you were doing as a, as a university professor with your students. And it's what you're doing now with your clients um, in this, in this role that you've created. So let, so I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you now to apply uh, your contribution, put your contribution helpful hat on okay. for a second. And um, you have so much expertise in this world of leadership management, process development, and, and that type of work that I'm going to ask you to put that put your expertise hat on and maybe talk to us, uh, talk to me as a consultant and talk to our other coaches and consultants that are listening um, and watching here and maybe share, you know, you started this company, you've been running it now for a while. Um, you have this level of expertise. What types of things that fall into the leadership or management or process development category, the ops category, would you recommend to a coach or consultant, whether they're a solo practitioner or whether they're, uh, they have a small team or maybe they've got a relatively healthy team and they're looking to take it to the next level? What would you perceive to, what would you say to them in terms of the keys of leveling up from a management leadership or process standpoint? I know that's a really broad question, but. Yeah, I could go so many ways. You know, it's, there's two things. One is, is just step into it. You know, if, if let's go straight to the name of your firm, right? Step up consulting. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's just, it's, it's just a matter of, you know, it, 
just do the thing and, and you'll figure it out on the way. And, and, and you get, get people around you that know more than you do. That's a, be, that's a beautiful thing about, about being a business. You can hire people that are smarter than you and put them yeah. to work and you harness their power. And, um, you know, don't be afraid to figure it out. You, you can, you can do this. And if, if, and if you assemble the right team, you are all good. Gotcha. You know, and it doesn't have to be necessarily be a team of employees. It's just, it's just a team right. of people that want to help. So let's, let's, uh, I want to dive into that a little bit. What I'm hearing you say is, um, and this is difficult for certain folks, and I put myself in this category from time to time, where I will overanalyze and it's paralysis by analysis, and I want this, that, and the other thing in place before I'll just go ahead and take action. What I'm hearing you suggest is don't do bad work, do good quality, but don't try to make it perfect. Just go ahead and do the thing. Whatever it is that you say, I want to do, if you truly want to do it, just take the action. Right. And you always have to be learning and, and you know, like process improvement. I'm a Six Sigma black, but that doesn't mean I'm perfect at processes and, and mm-hmm. designing processes. It means that I've <clears throat> gone through the class and I, I, I can figure it out. And also, no, nothing's going to be perfect the first time, right? Yeah. And you so don't try to make it so, right? Yeah. No. No, it's stepping. You're going to have some things that are good, and you're going to have some things that are bad. And then the thing is to say, how do I not do the bad stuff, and how do I do it better? Mm-hmm. And that that has to do with what do I need to learn? Interesting. And 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 what do I need to learn to make myself better, and then make this business better? Yeah. So never stop learning. My goodness, you know, it's, right. there's always something, and it doesn't matter how many degrees you got hanging on the wall because those are great pieces of paper, but they don't mean that you know much. That's they just, true. They, just yeah. they just mean that you you know. You always have to learn. And, and whether that's, you know, I listen to podcasts on my way to and from work. Well, I love music, right? But podcasts help me think about how right. I can be yeah. better. Right. And go, oh, I need to I need to go look at that, you know, yeah. and, and really, you know, buy a book. I mean, I, the book that I just bought and, and, mm-hmm. and devoured was called It's Your Ship. I don't yeah. know if you've ever heard of that. I've heard of the book, but I haven't read it. I'm going to make it. Michael Abershoff. Incredible. Just uh, uh, the amount of how he flipped his his um, the USS Benefold from a mess to the best ship in the Navy in a year. Wow. And, and just how he did it was he empowered his team. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, it wasn't, it was really, I mean, it just, it blew my mind. So, uh, so I, I just, I'm always trying to find my weak spots so I can make them less, better. You yeah, know, I'm right. never going to be, per- I'm never going to be perfect. I'm not a perfect person, yeah. Um, yeah. but, but I, I always try to, to examine my weak areas, be honest with myself and look to grow. So you just said something um, and you've alluded to it a couple of times, but you just said something, be honest with yourself. I, I, I will say, um, I'm better today at this than I have been in the past, but I'm okay. by no means perfect at it. Mm-hmm. And I think so much of, and I, and I, from other consultants and coaches that I speak to, because of the nature of the work that I do in terms of helping them grow their business, I talk to those folks all the time. And then mm-hmm. do this podcast, I get to meet wonderful folks like you. But so often I will have these conversations and there will be a level of timidity or fear, or procrastination, or um, doubt, and in terms of preventing them from from taking action, right? And what I what I so often diagnose it as, and I'm not perfect at this either. So this is no judgment; it's just an observation. What I often diagnose that as is, is we let our egos get in the way. We let our egos take the lead as opposed to the practical, objective action or activity that needs to happen, we let our ego say, no, 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 you're not ready yet, or you're not worthy yet, or that's not ready yet, or let's wait a little longer because we might fail or whatever it might be. From from the standpoint of teaching leaders to lead better, managers to manage better, what what do you see in terms of the role that that ego plays? Now, ego can also be a, a strength of ours, right? It can help us establish confidence and lead with purpose and those types of things. But maybe speak to that a little bit. What have you seen in your career in terms of how ego can often sabotage what we're trying to try achieve, especially in the in the sense of being a solo practitioner or, or running a small team? Yeah, I mean that goes. It takes me all the way back to to um, to high school and when I played. Yeah. You know, I participated in a bunch of athletics and, and yeah, being 
five nine. You know, you know, I wasn't going to be the, the the greatest, right? And I I didn't I wasn't an athletic specimen, but I <laughs> learned how that that I have a role. Yeah, in, in a team, and, and I carried that. I carry that forward to today, and it's all about understanding where you where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are, and being humble with those weaknesses, mm-hmm. and being humble with those strengths, and that's tough. You know, it's like, yeah, I can do this really well, and owning that, being confident in that, but I have a ways to go, mm-hmm. and yeah, I'm going to mess up, and and um, being able to say, you know what, that's my fault. I'm sorry. How do how can I be better? And and, and having having a team around you that accepts those apologies, but also comes with, you know what, we might want to look at this. Yeah, not afraid to confront. And then you attack that together. Yeah. And, and um, that's, I've been blessed to have some wonderful people around me that, that aren't afraid of, of saying that, yeah. you know what, yeah. you, you have a flat, you know, everybody's got these, these areas where they can work, but nobody likes to really look at them. All right. That's so true. We, we want to avoid them, right? We don't want to shine a light on them. Yeah, absolutely. That's human nature. But, but if you, if you have people around you that, that love you and want the best for you, but also want, you know, it's like, yeah, we can, we could look at that. It, that's just an area that where you can get better. And yeah. that's what, that's what life, that's what the journey is about, right? Getting better, but how also helping others along in that journey. Yep. So that's, that's where, that's kind of my mission. It's like, you know, I can, I, I want to help others achieve what they want to achieve their goals. Right. And, and, but I also want to achieve my goals as well. And that's not bad, but you have to be humble about that. And you have to be able to, to look at where you can be better. Yep. It's just an, op- it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. It's not, it's not a, it's not, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm such, I'm so bad because I do this. It's like this opportunity for me to get better. Well, let's get yeah. after that. That's right. And that, and that really is, that comes down to this mindset and this reframing of if there is an issue, a challenge, if there is timidity, if there's fear, if there's procrastination, you know, don't, uh, don't rake yourself over the, the rocks of guilt. Just right. simply, just simply say, acknowledge it. Don't, don't, don't be delusional either. Acknowledge that it exists, and then be open with yourself and your team, and saying, you know, this is something that I need to be more specific to help myself on. Or maybe you do need to surround yourself with individuals or team members that can either fill that gap or help you get past it. Um, and I think that's really, really important. Let's shift for a second because I know another one of the challenges that I consistently hear from. Uh, other consultants and coaches like you and I is I don't have enough time to get everything done. Um, you know, I'm wearing too many hats. I don't have time to create a process for this or that or the other thing. And so what I want to speak to is this idea of how to build um, stronger internal efficiencies specifically for smaller firms like like we operate. And, and again, the word is relative, right? Some small firms are hundred million dollars in some people's eyes in other people's eyes, a million dollars is small and other people's eyes. Well, a hundred thousand dollars is small. So everything's relative. So, you know, I, I acknowledge that, but in the world of uh, a consultant who's a solo practitioner has a small team uh, and they know that they need to establish better processes or just to establish, you know, an operations model in the first place, what would you tell someone who is facing that? And they see this daunting task as, trying to create these processes is overwhelming or information overload. And so they just keep pushing it off, pushing it off, pushing it off uh, until finally, you know, they're largely consumed by the business they created so that they would have freedom. What right. would you, what would be some advice you might give to, to people like me and to others who are, who are working to try to improve their own internal processes? Right. So I, I've got two things that, that, um, you know, I, I work with small business. I've got, I, I do that a little bit as well. Um, mm-hmm. in, in addition to the, to the, to the um, professional development. So um, one of them is, is, is set goals, set smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, what's my goal this year? And then you, you set that goal by the end of this year, I'm going to do X, Y, or Z. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you work backwards. What do I have to do every month to achieve that goal? Okay. Then you have monthly goals. And then from there, once you have those monthly goals, and it might be I need to I need to improve these processes. Okay, so the first quarter I'm gonna I'm going to take in my my client intake process, um, and the first month is going to be 
I'm going to I'm going to um, examine a system that does that better for me. Well, did you get that done or not? Well, no, because I didn't have any time. Well, did you set aside time? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right. Did you did you because it's not you can't you can't go, OK, this week I'm just going to do one thing. You have to Swiss cheese it. Right. And it's yeah. like, OK, I'm going to take a bite here. And and like I've told my clients, it's like, OK, well, you do your books every morning and you do it from eight to nine. And perhaps there's a time between nine and, and ten where you could do every other day, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you could do this part of that goal. Yeah. You could go look at CRM systems for your client intake, and then and then you could you could get the free account the next week, and then you could test it, and then you choose one by the end of the month. Well, now you're on the road. Yeah, you're not doing it all the time, but you're setting it aside in your calendar as busy, not as a not as free. Right. So you so you can take those bites, and enough time passes as you look back. Oh wow, I've achieved those. I've done goals. a lot. So, yeah. yeah, so you don't have to do it all in one day or all in one week, but you do have to plan for it and then measure it. Yeah. You know, uh, two notes on that. First of all, your note about reverse engineering goals, I think, is really, really important. And even for people who do that, what I'm also hearing you say is your where you attack your, your processes or where you're weakest with your process should be dictated by what goals you're trying to achieve, what 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 those goals are. So if your goals, maybe your goals are all about, well, in the next six months, I'm just trying to, to establish the infrastructure of my business. Okay. Well, that's that's a great goal. So what describe what that looks like specifically, and then reverse engineer and figure out what steps you need to take over month one through six to, to achieve that. A goal might be in, in my world, I always talk about revenue growth or, or number of clients added in a particular time, but reverse engineer that. And then that will, if that's truly the priority one is, is growth and, and more revenue or more clients, right. then what does that tell you about what processes you need to focus on the most, right? You obviously need your back end, your foundational stuff, right? You need a way to invoice and accounting and all that. But, but beyond that, you need to focus on uh, your prospecting process and your cultivation process and your sales process and your follow-up process, that's right? True. Those become priorities. So what I'm hearing you say is your goals will tell you where you should focus and prioritize your processes. And then it really is just a matter of, of staying disciplined and holding that time yep. that you put on your, you know, first of all, putting it on your calendar, not saying, oh, I'll do that sometime this week, but making an appointment with yourself and holding that time sacred. You know, I like to tell my clients when they're overwhelmed with, you know, work that we're doing together, I said, listen, this is not work that we have to do overnight. We have to do it over time. Right. And you get to dictate how fast or slow that is. Right. But if you want to achieve this result by this date, well, these are our key milestones and we have to hit those numbers. But now, again, we can wrap our heads around it by chunking it down into into these bite sized pieces. Right. And then it becomes it becomes a goal, not a wish. Yes, it's concrete. Right. There's a specific plan. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you put you put a You put a time and a date on that. And, and I have to do this by the end of the month. Well, now it's real. Right. And then it's like, how do I, you know, okay, that's going to take 10 hours. Well, block 10 hours off on, on your calendar for the, for the month just to get that done. Yep. And it's, it's discipline, but also it's beneficial to the business and you are going to be better for it. And yeah, yep. it takes away maybe a client call, or but it doesn't necessarily take it away. It just moves it to a different time. Yeah. Well, and, that, and, that, and that's a really important point that you're making here is because I do have so many you know, I have these conversations and, and it's with peer. It's not just with prospects and clients, it's with peers. Mm -hmm. um, and we're talking about, you know, we all have, we all struggle with the same types of challenges as a rule. And the, the, the concept or the, the uh, point of resistance I often hear about, about process development or about getting that new CRM in place or whatever it is, right. is I don't have time for that. I'm too busy prospecting and delivering service to my clients which is great. And that's important. We have very important work, but how long can you continue to operate your business in this chaotic way? If you don't have that CRM established and you're working through it. In other words, what at some point this important priority, right. To steal from Stephen Covey at some point, this important priority becomes urgent. It becomes an emergency, right? right. And we don't want that, that need for a CRM as an example, we don't want that important issue to become an urgent emergency, right? We want to deal with it way back here when we can think through it and deal with it properly as opposed to letting our business consume us. And so at some point, 
it's act, what you said is so true. It is a question of, of personal self-discipline, but it is in the best interest of the business, short, medium, and long-term to go ahead and deal with these types of process issues that you know you're going to have to deal with sooner or later. And the sooner you deal with them, the better your business will be and the more liberty you will have as the owner of the business. Right. And what you don't want to do is get it, get it to be like three months forward and you haven't done anything. And then all of a sudden you have to spend days on the thing. Now, yeah. now, now to achieve your goal, now you're looking at, okay, it's like now it's project management triangle, right? The, yeah. the, the triple constraints. And yeah. now we've, we've, we've worked into this, this corner. Exactly. So, um, it, it's, it's, you know, people hate it, but the Swiss cheese method really does work. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bite. It, I love it. It's a bite at a time. And, yep. you know, I'm reminded of, of my college days, right. Uh, speaking to, you know, using an analogy from, from your recent world more than once. And you would think that we would learn our lesson, but more than once I found myself cramming for a test, right? So I'm putting it down I'm putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Mm-hmm. And then, Oh, wait, uh, Tuesday at 9.00 AM it's Monday at 10 PM tomorrow at 9.00 AM. I got to be ready to write this significant, you know, final exam or midterm or whatever it might be, or a term paper or a thesis or whatever, you know, whatever you might be working on. And it's like, why did I wait so long? Because now, I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what, exactly. And so as business owners, as adults, right, we we should know better, but oftentimes we, we make those same mistakes over and over again. I think it's, it begins by just being aware, right, of that situation and, and refusing to allow ourselves to be put in that position again. And that's where that Swiss cheese method, I think is so powerful is don't try to eat the whole block at a time, just a bite here or there. And, and it will get done faster than you think. Yeah. And self-discipline is a thing. So, you know, that, that's the thing you have to, I mean, I live by my calendar. My wife is, yeah. drives me crazy because she's like, what are we doing this week? I'm like, I don't know. I got to look at my calendar because I have, I have the little lights, you know, and, yeah. and that's how I live now, which is really funny. Cause if you look at myself in, as an undergrad, that is not, that was not me. <laughs> so I, I guess 30 years has been well spent. Um, yeah. it's one of those things where you, where it's, you have to learn how you best work. Yeah. Right. And that is that is a huge part of it. That is a huge part of it. Absolutely. Um, the conversation has been fantastic. I can't believe so much time has already gone by. I, I want to wrap up our interview here by just maybe uh, by asking a question that I ask all my guests. Is I think one of the most important things that I ask, and the and the, <laughs> the insight that I always get is is tremendous in your career. And this can be personal, professional. Mm-hmm. Um, in your career, top lessons learned. What would you, what wisdom or gold nuggets or just general insight would you tell a uh, a coach or consultant, again, on the personal side or the professional side to help them improve their life or improve their business? What's been your experience? Be bold in what you can do and, and, and step forward into that knowing that you can do it. It might be some work on your end, but that's all right. Yeah. And, and also have a mission for your life. Mine is to pour into others. Right. And if you make sure that you're still aligned, mm. if, if you have an opportunity, but it's not aligned with your mission or not aligned with your goals, you know what? It's okay to refer that to a different person. There you go. You know, Cause you, it's not about, for me, it's not about the money. It's about achieving my mission and my goals. Yeah. And, and um, you know, if, as long as it's in your wheelhouse, step up and get it done. I love it. Um, yeah, I, I can directly relate to this alignment issue of, of, and it's natural, right? We're in a solo uh, business or we have a small team and, you know, every dollar matters and we're trying to, especially early on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it feels like we're under the pressure of accepting any deal that comes in. Um, and that's the that's the innate pressure. But what you're saying, I think, is is really critical. And that is, if you know what you're really trying to achieve money aside. If you know what you're truly trying to achieve, what your purpose and what your mission is and what your skill set is, of course, right? right? It's not about misrepresenting, but if you know what your mission and purpose are, it's okay to say no to, to an opportunity. In fact, it's, if you truly want to achieve those things that you say you want to achieve, it will be mandated upon you from time to time to turn down business and to say no to it, because that's not in alignment with what you truly want, where, where you truly want to go. Absolutely. Yeah. No is not a bad word. No is not a bad word. Yeah. It's okay. So you know what? This is this is not my wheelhouse. However, I can I can refer you to others that, right. that will be better than me. Because yeah. it's about 
that again is about quality and making sure that you're doing the best for your clients, whether they're, you know, okay, it's a prospect, but you're still doing the best for them. Right. And you're doing, you're, and you're referring business to, to a competitor. Okay. That's not great, but you're pouring into them yeah. and that will be remembered and that will be valued. Yep. I love so, it. Yeah. That's good. Um, Greg, if someone wants to learn more about Step Up Consultants, if they wanted to reach out to you, have a conversation, uh, what's the best way for them to find out more or to get in touch with you? You know, I'd love to have people, you know, the easiest way is go up to my to my website, stepupconsultants.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, there's a link there for the for LinkedIn and Twitter and all the all the social medias. But you know, also it's just it's you know, there's a contact page, my, my personal number is on there. Text me. It's great. Um, happy to have conversations, whether that's business conversations or just life. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, like I said, my, my deal is professional development and I'll talk that all day, as you well know, Scott. So, um, <laughs> you know, I just, thanks so much for having me. I've just been a pleasure. Well, it's been an honor to have you. Thank you for being so generous with your time and your expertise. I know it's going to benefit a lot of people. I've got two full pages of notes from our conversation, <laughs> which again, just seemed like it zipped by. But thank you so much for um, your contribution today. And I'll look forward to continuing our conversation in the future. Yeah, I'd love to come back. Thanks, Manny. Absolutely. For Consulting with Authority, this is Scott Cantrell, as always, wishing you the best of success. Thank you for listening. I hope you got a ton of value out of this episode. And before we go, I want to thank the sponsor of our show, Smart Solutions Media. Smart Solutions Media empowers business owners, consultants, and other independent professionals to easily attract better prospects and transform them into long-term clients. If you're a B2B consultant or service professional and would like to start filling your pipeline with better quality prospects, visit us on the web at smartsolutionsmedia.com to learn more about what we can do to help you. Be sure to complete this short two-minute accelerated growth scorecard you can find on the website and you'll receive a complimentary strategy session where we'll give you specific insights and recommendations to help you attract high-value clients. Until next time, make sure you are consulting with authority.